Hey everyone, Robin from Backscatter here, and today we're taking a look at part two of our best settings for the Olympus TG5 video series. In part two, we're focusing on getting the best photos when shooting with a video light. So let's jump right into it. Here's the settings you need to know. We've broken these settings out into on the boat and in the water settings. We basically do this so that it minimizes the amount of what you need to manage during your dive. You can download these as a helpful little PDF cheat sheet at the link in the video description. So now we'll spend the rest of this video breaking down exactly what these settings are and how to achieve them on your TG5. So first let's talk for a second about why you might choose a video light to shoot still photos instead of using a strobe. A video light can be a really great solution for the new underwater shooter. It's a very beginner friendly setup. One of the first advantages to a video light is that you can run a more compact overall system. You can mount a video light with minimal hardware directly to the cold shoe mount on top of your housing, meaning less hardware and a smaller system for you to manage in the water. You wouldn't mount a strobe here because it's way too limiting for the capabilities of a strobe, but a video light can be really simply and effectively used when attached at the shoe mount. Now you can also of course mount your video light onto a control arm similar to a strobe, which would allow you more range of movement to adjust your light and to get more creative. A video light is also always on, so this constant source of illumination means no waiting for a flash to recycle both on the camera or in the strobe, so you get an overall much faster shooting speed. Because of this constant light source, there's also no optical cable or synchronization you have to manage like you would with a strobe. Plus, you get to see your exposure in real time. It's basically a constant preview of exactly what your shot is going to look like. We like to say that this is basically the best kind of TTL because what you see is what you get. You don't need to worry about taking the shot, then reviewing it just to see how that exposure turned out. That video light's gonna tell you exactly what your shot looks like every time. This is also great for the camera because it knows exactly what exposure to run based on that scene and you're gonna get a nearly perfect exposure with almost every single shot. You also get to learn your light positioning technique a lot faster because you can see those shadows and effect that the light has on your scene and subject develop in real time right before you. And then of course, if you're going on a night dive, it means you don't have to take two lights. You can just use your one video light for your source of illumination and for the camera. While there are a lot of benefits you can gain from a video light, there are some drawbacks to consider as well. The first, and obviously the biggest impact that a video light's gonna have on your image, is that it's nowhere near as bright as a strobe is. Strobes are many, many more times powerful. And because a video light isn't as bright, that means it's not gonna travel as far through the water, meaning it's a little more limited in its application. Because of that distance the light travels through the water, it's gonna lock us into pretty much just the macro and super close subject mode. Now there are some kind of fish portrait and fish ID shots you can still obtain with a video light, but that's about the effective limit of what you can really light. The flip side of this is that because the TG5 is such an awesome macro camera, having a video light that's only good for that macro range isn't that much of a hindrance. This setup can actually nail some really great macro photos. When shooting photos with a video light, you also can't really separate the background exposure from the foreground exposure of the image. That's something that's really critical for wide angle photography. When you combine that with the lack of brightness compared to a strobe that a video light puts out, it really doesn't make it a practical solution for lighting wide angle shots. Therefore, we're just gonna stick to focusing on macro. One other major thing to consider when using a video light is that your images can be subject to more motion blur than when using a strobe. This is because this light is always on, it's a constant source as opposed to a quick burst that a strobe would give you. That's okay though, we can compensate for this by tricking the camera to running a faster shutter speed and that's exactly what we're gonna cover in this video. We're really aiming for two key elements for our macro photos to stand out here. The first of which is a nice clean, dark background behind the subject, and the second is tack sharp focus on an area of critical detail, most often the eyeball of your subject. So that's what we're gonna be aiming for with these custom settings. Now that we've covered most of those basics, let's get right into our on the boat settings. If you've already been experimenting with your TG5 a little bit, you may wanna do a full reset. Follow the steps I show on screen here, and this will get your camera back to its out of the box default setting. Then go ahead and rotate the mode dial to the microscope mode. 
This is technically an in the water setting and something you might change during your dive, but we gotta choose at least one mode to be in while we get these settings dialed in. And the microscope is probably where we're gonna spend most of our time, so go ahead and start there. The first thing we're gonna set is the file type for our image. Now shooting in RAW is always best, but if you don't know what a RAW image is, or if you're unsure if your computer has the software to develop a RAW image, you can set it to shoot in both RAW and JPEG. This way you'll have an instantly usable JPEG file and a RAW file you can archive for later. We'll talk a little bit more about the differences and advantages of shooting in RAW in our advanced settings video a little later in the series. Then we'll go down and we'll turn on our live view boost. This is gonna boost the on-screen preview in real time so we can better see exactly what the camera is seeing. Then we'll go ahead and we'll turn down our exposure compensation using the top dial on the camera to negative 0.3. This is gonna increase the shutter speed to help reduce motion blur as well as dark in the background, but it's also gonna knock down some of the highlights and brightest parts of our shot as well as increasing the color saturation, all of which really just means you get a better looking photo right out of the camera. Then we'll change our ISO. Now ISO can really be anywhere in a range of 100 to 400. If you remember from part one, ISO is the degree of sensitivity that the camera sensor has. So the lower the number, the better. But in general, because our video light's not quite as bright as our strobe, we'll need to boost our ISO a little bit compared to where we'd have it like locked at 100 with a strobe. We found that with about a 2000 lumen video light, you can get an ISO of 400 on the TG5 and have a very, very nice image. If you go over 400, that's when you start getting a little too much noticeable noise in your shot. Now ISO value is gonna be relative to the brightness and the power output of your light. So 100 to 400 is kind of the ideal range, but the lower you can get that number, the better. White balance is an easy one. We're gonna keep that set to auto because we're gonna be close enough to our subject that it's not gonna matter. When it comes to the focus, that's another easy one. We'll leave it just set to auto focus mode. You use a half press of the camera shutter to achieve auto focus, and the TG5 works great for macro when it comes to autofocusing. In fact, it's our fastest and best performing camera when it comes to macro autofocus. Then go ahead and make sure that your flash is turned to off. Our video light's doing all the exposure work here and we don't wanna waste shooting speed, recycle time, or battery life by having it stuck on on the camera. Plus, any light coming out of that diffuser window on the housing is more likely to create backscatter in your image. So definitely make sure that flash is set to off. Next, we'll make sure our image stabilization is turned on to help reduce any motion blur from handshake of the camera. When it comes to the frame rate and the shooting speed, we actually unlock a unique benefit of the TG5 when using a video light. Because we don't have to wait for a flash or a strobe to recycle, we can set the shooting speed to continuous high and just let it fire away. I think for the best autofocus accuracy and making sure your shot's composed, I kind of like to keep it to the single shot myself. But if you got a subject that's demonstrating some really quick or fleeting behavior and you just need to get that shot, go ahead and hold that shutter down and fire away. There's also a really cool mode on the TG5 called the Pro Capture Mode that you can use when shooting with a video light, but we'll talk more about that in our advanced settings video. So that's pretty much everything we need to know on the boat or on our ride out to the dive site to get your TG5 dialed in. But before we get into our in the water settings, there's one more special note I wanna talk about, and that's avoiding any potential reflective color cast from this red bezel on the front of the Olympus housing for this camera. This is by far the most popular housing we do sell for the TG5, but it comes with this machined aluminum red bezel on the front. When shooting a super close subject with a video light, it can be possible to pick up some color reflection off of that metal and have kind of an awkward red color cast in your shot. In order to avoid this, I like to use a black step-down ring and thread it onto the front, or if I don't have one of those, I'm not above taking a little bit of Sharpie or electrical tape and just masking that out to help kill any awkward reflection. So now that we've got that dialed in like a pro, let's move on to our in-the-water settings. As we covered a little bit before, we're gonna be primarily in microscope mode when shooting the TG5. This is really the best mode for dedicated macro shooting. And honestly, for as far as this light travels underwater, microscope mode and its focal range is kind of what you're locked into when shooting with a video light. You can also kick the camera over to the P or program mode if you don't want to be as close when you're shooting your subject and be able to focus a little farther away. 
Or maybe if you're doing a night dive and knocking out all that ambient light isn't such a priority, P mode could work as well. For the most part though, when shooting macro, we like to just keep it to microscope mode. Shutter speed is one thing that I really want you to pay attention to when you're in the water and using this camera with a video light. You don't actually have direct control over the shutter speed. The TG5 is going to automatically determine that based on your other settings and the lighting in the scene and the subject. 1 250th of a second or faster is our target shutter speed because that's what's going to freeze that motion in your image as well as help ensure that clean dark background. The working distance from your subject, about how close you actually need to be to shoot it, is anywhere from about six inches away up to one inch or really as close as you can get. You always want to be as close as you can to your subject without spooking it away and ruining the shot. When it comes to the zoom, we prefer to be zoomed all the way into the four times optical zoom limit, especially when shooting in microscope mode to get the most magnification of those tiny macro subjects. But that might be a little too tight of a shot for every scene and subject. Zoom is a tool you can use to compose your shot as needed for whatever that scene and subject may be. There's no one place for that zoom to be locked in that's always correct. For focus, always try to get that tack sharp part of the shot on the most critical detail area of your subject. Most often on macro subjects, this is gonna be an eyeball, but it can really be any defining feature of your subject. Recompose and reacquire focus as often as you need to in order to make sure you're getting that tack sharp area right where you want it on your shot. When it comes to your actual video light power, you always wanna be on the brightest setting possible. The brighter the video light, the faster the shutter speed your camera can run, and the lower the ISO you can set for less noise in your image. When we're shooting still photos with a TG5 and a video light, we like at least 2000 lumens for a flood beam or 1200 lumens for a spot beam. But the brighter you can go, the better. We'll cover more about the best video lights that we recommend in our best accessories video. If you are using a video light that has both a flood and a spot beam, go for the spot beam every time for these macro photos. It might not blanket as wide of an area, but that's good because it's concentrating that brightness right on where we want it with the subject, enabling the camera to get a much more ideal exposure setting. When it comes to light positioning, you want that light to be sitting forward and a little downward over the subject, sometimes even straight down over the top. Most of the time you're gonna be working so close to your subject that there's just not a lot of room for adjustment here. Try to get the light as close as possible and try to only light your subject, not the water in between the subject and the lens, otherwise you could create some backscatter. Even though running a light directly in the hot shoe is the smallest overall configuration, having a light on an arm like this does allow for quite a bit more flexibility and adjustment when it comes to positioning. A key thing to remember in the water is shoot, review, and adjust. Don't just take one shot of your subject and then swim away. Check that shot. Is the focus where you want it? Are the shadows where you want them? If not, make the necessary adjustments, keep shooting, keep reviewing, and keep repeating that until you nail that shot or until the scene and the subject just don't wanna cooperate anymore. Get one nice shot that you're really happy with, secure, and then see if you can push in a little closer. You might get something even more outstanding. And if you end up spooking that subject, well, at least you already got one keeper on your card. With all that, now you are set for success to get the best photo possible from your TG5 when shooting with a video light. Here's another look at our on the boat and in the water settings. And remember, you can download this as a PDF, print out and keep in your gear bag at the link in the description below. Remember, every purchase from Backscatter includes free lifetime tech support, and we actually dive, shoot, and service everything we sell. So when you need help with your TG5 and you call us up, you're getting help from a real team of expert underwater photographers. I'm Robin from Backscatter signing off, and don't forget to keep those O-rings clean.